2005, we had 35 employees, two who were under the age of 35. We now have 52 employees, 22 of whom are under the age of 35. Gary Gillis was my grandfather. He founded the Gillis Insurance Agency in 1933. He left what was then a thriving agency to start his own. He wasn't sure about the future of any business in 1933 and decided he would do better on his own. The agency grew with my grandmother being the gal fraud of the office for several years, grew well, and in the 1950s, Ellis and Baker boys married Gillis girls. Ultimately, the name of the agency was uh, changed to Gillis, Ellis, and Baker. The change for us was uh, 10, 12 years ago, we ran into a series of consultants that we worked with. We were challenged to think about it, uh, think of a different way to do our business. So that we were very much like everybody else we competed against, doing things the same way, same traditional style. Uh, we decided that our difference would be to invest heavily in loss control and risk management and frankly to stop selling insurance and start helping people buy insurance. And I know that sounds like semantics but that really is what it was. You know, we wanted us to dream big and our big dream was let's get to five or six million dollars uh, and now here we are at ten and uh, I really do think that the, the change for us was that, that decision to be different to stop focusing on price, to start focusing on getting it right. Uh, and today, uh, you know, we were the, the 2012 National Agency of the Year by Rough Notes Magazine, um, voted one of the top two places to work in the city of New Orleans. And uh, I like where we are right now. We're not going to rest. But uh, that's, that's sort of our story, getting from generation one to generation three. It became clear to us that we obviously have to bring in that fourth generation. We've got to bring a new group of both producers and future owners as well as staff and so for the last probably seven or eight years we've made a conscious concerted effort to recruit find bring in uh, then begin the process of training this next generation with some effort and with some training and technical knowledge just like any other industry you can create a career that by age 30 is often running to the point where your, your income is unlimited, your ability to control your future is unlimited, um, you know, the, the, the miracle and beauty of renewal commissions. And so if you find someone who's got a sales bent and show them how well you, what you sell in year one, you also collect revenue on year two and three and on down the line and how it just builds on top of each other, you can just see the light bulb go off and they're like, well, okay, where do I sign up? And what's been interesting is, and, and I'd love to say all of this was done by design, that we were smart enough to have all this figured out by the, when we started, but, but it wasn't. We've kind of had some trial and error. We've had some things that we've learned along the way. But one of the things we've kind of done, and I, I've said this to a lot of people, is we've, we've, we've tried to replicate ourselves, who were, and if you look at it that way, are replications of our parents and, and how they worked within the industry. We've looked for people who were from New Orleans, who are of New Orleans. And by that I mean they grew up here, even if they went away to college, um, their families are from here, their friends are the people who will be the future business owners and, and, and leaders of the community. My wife and I are both from New Orleans, uh, born and raised, and we knew that when we came back here, we wanted to start a family and be here the rest of our lives, and I knew very, very early on, talking with Park and Anderson, that they were creating something special, and I wanted to be a part of that, and so it's been exciting to be with Gillis Elson Baker and see them bring to life their vision. I, I love it. Everyone has each other's back. It's a really tight-knit family and I felt 100% at ease since the first time I ever walked in. We work out together on Wednesdays 
and at the end of the month we always have a big office lunch where Park usually makes something and everyone can bring a side or a dessert if they want to contribute to that. But it's just a really happy, fun place to be. So I came to Gillis Allison Baker and I was going to do sort of explore production, but really it was supposed to be here on the marketing and public relations level to kind of get our name out into the community. And I sat down in one producer meeting and said, never mind the marketing, I want to do that. And so from that day forward, that was the path I've been on and been doing that for about two and a half years and it's been a really great experience and it was a great decision. I think that we've got really proactive leadership who realize that one of the biggest issues in our industry right now is it's a very much an aging industry and they can't keep going forever. They're going to have to pass the torch at some point and they've been so good at getting out ahead of the curve on the way we tailor our business and the way we run the technology in the business. I think it was a natural decision to get out ahead of the curve in the way we have our continuation plan going. So they started taking on really bright, really eager young people who were, were ready to come in here and work and who, who, sort of like I was, were in industries where they weren't happy and didn't really feel like they were in control of their future, in control of their careers, and, and really sort of pulled us into the lifeboat and pulled us over into this industry, and everyone's happy to be here and it's been a good decision. It's easy to go to someone and ask for help. Uh, I think that's the first thing that really kind of helps move you along. The second thing is, I mean, we do things like the huddle, or even for the younger producers like myself, we do kind of another huddle where we get to talk about things that may be a little bit too elementary for some of our other producers. And it's, you know, it's a very welcoming environment. We want to say what we want. Um, and the help is always there from those people that have lived it before we have. And so internally there's a little bit of competition because weekly we're reporting on our successes from the past week and what we've got going on this week. Um, so there's a little bit of friendly competition for that, but then also there's a lot of camaraderie built between the younger producers because we then build each other up and answer each other's questions and it's a really safe place to ask questions where you don't feel like, oh, somebody's going to laugh at me for not knowing this, um, you know, maybe that you wouldn't ask in front of more experienced producers. Sometimes we do role playing and trying to improve our sales technique and a lot of times it's coverage information that maybe we don't know as well as we, we think we do or we should and it's, it's a good time for us to kind of quiz one another and have Doug and Park quiz us as well. I would love to say it's an orchestrated process, but we're not quite that detailed, but it is something that every day, my thought process and others around here is, what, what do we have on the tap for the youngsters today and how can we help them get better today than they were yesterday? Uh, to that end, we've, we've instituted several uh, kind of uh, training mechanisms. Uh, the first was the, the, the mentoring, which is assigning them or attaching them to a senior member who they had to um, go with them on calls, to, to go with the older person on the calls, to hear what goes on in their meetings. We're in the process of really formalizing that into what we're going to call our ORs or OARs. It's going to give our senior producers the ability to trade uh, or trade down, to delegate, to assign duties related to their existing business to these youngsters, which will force the youngsters to be to learn more, to be exposed to more, a lot quicker. The way that the younger producers work with the older producers, because I think there's definitely a generation gap, so you just never know how that's going to work out, and it's it's been great. I mean, the, the producer I work with is probably two generations older than me, so <laughs> just working through, you know, those type of issues and and finding a way to work really well together has been has been great. We've got a couple of producers who are in their 30s who've already gone through this kind of process. And what happens is they learn more in 24 months than they would in 10 years on their own because they're out in front of large, complex clients and doing the work related to these large, complex clients soon and quickly and much sooner than they would be able to develop on their own. And the confidence that comes from doing that allows them to then go out and go out and call on a smaller account, still worthwhile but smaller, and have the confidence to work on it. You know, I'm not scared of an $80,000 premium account because I've just been working on an $800,000 premium account. It just, it, it doesn't, it doesn't scare me. We buy into the idea that youth is 
important for us, not just to bring new ideas, but it's part of our perpetuation plan. I have no desire um, to sell to an outside entity. Uh, we want to sell all of this agency to these young kids coming up right now, and we're thrilled to have them uh, in our office right now.